Here is our last numerical kanji for a long time. First, you're going to make a line going from the upper right slanting down toward the left. And then while you're there, drop your stylus a little bit and then go make a nice long straight line. And then draw a line from the upper stroke you draw straight down through that uh, horizontal line you drew so that uh, that middle line you drew becomes the center. Make it long enough so that it becomes the center. That will make our next kanji, which connotes the concept of thousand. The major readings for this kanji are sen and chi. That simple. Alone is read as sen and means thousand, one thousand, more specifically. However, if you pronounce it as chi, it can still be, it can still mean a thousand. It can also mean many when it's read as chi. Uh, so when you want to say thousand as in a lot or many, you would probably use chi instead of sen. That's all that really means. When we are using the next stages of the thousands, it follows the same pattern. So we say Nisen for 2000, and 3 makes an irregularity again. It's not Sansen, it's Sanzen. It's just the way it is. Sanzen means 3000. And similar to uh, Sanbyaku, which would be 300, Sanzen is also used to mean many a lot. And then we continue again with Yonsen. I've never heard Shisen in my life. I would definitely stick to Yonsen. And then the rest is just Gosen, Rokusen, Shichisen or Nanasen, Hachisen, Kyusen. And then to say the largest number you follow the same pattern again. If you think we're going to say 9 in front of 1,000, then 9 in front of 100, then 9 in front of 10, then 9, in order to say 9,999, you're exactly correct. Now, don't jump to the conclusion that we can go into the higher thousands now, just because we have a kanji that connotes the concept of 1,000. There are different kanji for the larger numbers. There's another kanji for 10,000, which I'm not going to teach you here. It's uh, not at your uh, grade level, if you will, quite yet. So we'll learn that later. Right now, we know the kanji for the one-digit thousands, if you will. We can't jump to 10,000 yet, and we certainly can't jump to 100,000 yet. So we have to stick where we are at 9,999. And... That's what it looks like. 9 in front of 1,000, followed by 9 in front of 100, followed by 9 in front of 10, followed by 9. A 7 kanji string, which is definitely going to be the very biggest you're going to see for a very long time. And none of the readings change. It's still just Q Q That's 9,999. Awesome. Now. We can do a couple more things with thousand. This is tsizini. Tsizini is an adverb, and it would describe a verb like shatter or scatter or break or you know whatever. It describe it would describe an action as being done in pieces. So if you can think of any other way to say that. I can't. This this ad this adverb is used to describe 
shattering actions. That's what it is. Actions that separate things. You'll notice that the reading of the second thousand is not chi and it's not sen. It's zi. A reading that you're not going to see very often at all. That is not technically a reading for thousand. We just went through it that the major readings for thousand are sen and chi. Note why I always say major readings, because readings like this will occur. Now, this isn't too abnormal. All you did was added, you just added dakten to chi to make it zi. That's all you really did to it. It's not a major change. It's a, it's a related reading. It's a similar reading. So, this isn't a big switch, but it just goes to show you kanji reading listings are not absolute. There are almost always, there are virtually, appreciably, always exceptions. So don't get too thrown off by that when that sort of thing happens. Also, you see two kanji of the same kind, one right next to the other, so you can just go right ahead and put the iteration mark. Notice that here the iteration mark as always, is a reflection of the kanji that it follows. But the reading is different. This is the 1% case where the reading is different than the kanji that precedes it. It still carries the same kanji. It, it's still the same kanji. And if you drop the ni, you get a noun. Sensen or chizi. It can be read either way. Both readings are synonymous, and it is a noun that literally means thousands. Um, and everything that goes along with thousands. And just as you can uh, do it in Sidzini, you can go ahead and put the iteration mark instead of writing the kanji for thousand twice. Um, this is a noun. Both sensen and Sidzi are nouns, uh, which mean thousands of something, a uh, great number of something, or simply put, it means a variety of something. Uh, it is a noun. It's not an adjective. You can use the numbers as adjectives and nouns, but uh, adjectives are a little trickier in Japanese. So no, you can't say thousands. You can't use thousands as if it were an adjective. You can't just go ahead and do that. It, it's a noun. Adjectives are very different in Japanese, and we'll get to that later. So this is your last numerical kanji for a nice long time. You've probably gotten used to the kanji having this set general meaning, um, but you've gotten your feet wet. We've gotten our feet wet here in the kanji category. We can now count from one to 9,999, and that's enough numerical information for now. Now we're going to get into other totally essential kanji um, that really have nothing to do with numbers. We'll make, we'll make kanji pairs with the numbers constantly uh, because they're very useful, but the new kanji we will be learning will not be numbers. So just keep that in mind. We are moving on. Uh, this is Angel of Great Buskins, signing off.